All right, so um, councils from last night, the court has had an opportunity to listen to all five of the audio calls from two Yankee Alpha to two Yankee Echo. Um, and then I've also, I'll mark as the next court to exhibit Mr. Weinstein's email to all of you. Uh, this morning is the next court exhibit in order. And I have had a chance to take a look at uh, Pitts versus the state, 280 Georgia. At 288, 2006 matter. And um, consider it. Right, I've also had an opportunity to uh, consider again, consider Carlson's Guide to Evidence Authentication, third edition, um, chapter 15, um, subpart 03, pertained to 911 calls. A recording of a 911 call frequently qualifies as an admissible excited utterance. And when a 911 call is made to avert a crime in progress or seeks assistance in the face of immediate danger, these Circumstances can merit introduction into evidence and it cites for that proposition. United States versus Vasquez, uh, 763 uh, Fed APPX 136 Second Circuit and also United States versus Mitchell, 726 uh, Fed APPX uh, 498. Um, In taking a look at Pitts, uh, that was the first case where our Supreme Court, um, Chief Justice uh, Sears writing for the court, uh, basically adopted the majority view of, uh, depending upon the, that these types of calls need to be made or determinations need to be made on a case by case basis. The court in taking a look at the um, phone calls from one through five um, is of the opinion that they fall within the excited utterance category. Um, but Mr. Weinstein, I'll let you perfect your, your or have you, if you have any additional argument on the issue, I'll be more than happy to consider it. Thank you, Your Honor. You got five minutes. I won't need five minutes, Your Honor. All right, okay, all right. You can put the timer on. The regardless of whether the calls are an excited utterance, and I understand how the court could see that, given certainly co perhaps calls one and five, the there's still the issue of Pitts and Crawford. Um, the calls are testimonial in nature. How are they, they how are they testimonial in nature? Here's, here's why. Let's have a conversation. Sure, have a conversation. Love it. This is a nine one one call, in, a citizen initiated call. And it is somebody who is in a state of mind telling about somebody who needs medical attention. And it's clear that from the call, from those series of calls, that, that was, that's what was undergoing at that point in time. So it's different than if you were to like initiate the, or take an interview of somebody. These are citizen initiated calls. So why wouldn't you say that, why would you say that they're testimonial in nature? Okay, I agree with everything you've said as to the nature of the calls, but all those calls are taking place, and if you look at Pitts, one of the tests is, is it a call after a completed violation of the law? And but, if I could but, just, that, but that's only one issue. The issue is, what was the call made for the purpose of? It was made for the purpose of seeking medical attention. So you're reading it too narrow, sir. It's an or. I, I disagree that it's okay, that it's well, that it's an or. I understand okay, the court's right. position. Or is disjunctive, so, right? An or is well, that means I can, so that, well, so I do remember my I, I, do, I, I do remember the or may not necessarily be disjunctive, but in this case, I'm going to read it as a disjunctive. I, I understand, but as I read the or in Pitts, and uh, I saw it as either a completed violation of the law or to assist uh, law enforcement in apprehension of the perpetrator. Um, it seems to me that, or sorry, not the or there, but um, I think these were made in order to report a completed violation of the law, which is one of the tests under PITS. 
there to assist law enforcement in apprehending a perpetrator. Um, they clearly have testimony in there. And the primary purpose of that particular call, the primary purpose of that call, you can tell just from the just from the, the nature of the call is that you've got a shooting. you got you got somebody who is who is very um, insistent on getting an ambulance there. And they're talking to the person that's been shot, which is the presence and its impression. So how can you say that that's for the purposes of, you know, um, for the primary purposes for prosecution. But how can you say that when you look at Pitts' test of uh, uh, reporting a completed violation of the law, that that's not what's going on there? They're not under present danger, which is another one of the, I believe, tests in Pitts. Uh, they're not in immediate peril at that point. Um, so that's not what the call is for. And, I, and I'm worried, I'm a little concerned that I want to make sure we keep hearsay and the confrontation clause issues separate. Because I understand that uh, what you're saying about excited utterance, which, I, you know, is a hearsay issue, but I don't believe okay. that's a confrontation clause um, issue. Carlson goes on to discuss, and there are several cases that bear this out, do excited, excited utterances violate Crawford versus Washington, which is... 541 U.S. at 36, 2004. The Crawford decision requires that most evidence employed by the prosecution in a criminal case must be cross-examined. Since the excited utterance speaker in Rule 803-2 situations is generally not cross-examined, does the admission of his or her statements violate Crawford? No. I mean, not if the speaker was in the middle of the crime situation and calling 911 exactly. for, help, for help. And that's uh, they, it's like Dixon versus the state, 996, uh, uh, I guess, a uh, second uh, at 1270, uh, 1271. So, um, and then it's distinguishing from narrative statements made to the police, which would, in fact, need to be tested under a confrontation clause analysis. Okay, Your Honor, I understand, but they are not, and, and I think one of the words you used was, uh, or one of the phrases was, were they in the middle of a crime situation? They're not in the middle of a crime situation. This is the aftermath, uh, a tragic aftermath of the crime. You can listen to one of the 911 calls. The car has already sped off. They're not in danger. The crime is complete. How do you know that? They're, the crime is, they've left. The crime is completed at that sound like, point. They sound like, I mean, that's just one factor, sir. I think, again, I think you're, I think you're reading it too narrowly. But. Well, well, we can go back to Mr. Carlson and what that phrase you used that was in Mr. Carlson's book. And they are not in the midst of a crime. The crime is over at that point, Your Honor. Um, if you'd like to limit me to five seconds, I'm happy to move on to a 403 <laughs> analysis at this point, Your Honor. <laughs> Although I still maintain there's a confrontation clause issue with all five calls. I, I won't concede that. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, and, sir, I wouldn't expect you to do so either. And I'll no I, I will note, I, I will note that, 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 that is your, uh, certainly your position. Um, <clears throat> And Your Honor, I'd point out. Oh, oh let, 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 let him finish, and I'll let you argue now. Okay. All right. Um, okay. I'm still, I think it's an or, and I think that that is an, is enough for reading. I understand, and, and, I, and, and I under four or three analysis certainly. Um, the, I'll note your objection that the, these calls are certainly more prejudiced than probative, but they are, they are, um, <sighs> probative, um, in this particular circumstance. So, uh, okay. If I can discuss 403 just a little bit, Your Honor. Sure. Um, let's just look right at the fifth call. Okay. We can look at that one. There is nothing of probative value in the fifth call. All that you hear for over five minutes in the fifth call are people desperately urging Donovan Thomas, to, tell him the Don student student Thomas student to hang on, hang on. But it's, it's what, what's the probative value of that, Your Honor? Well, it, 
other than the tragedy of his death. Well, we don't know that. We well, don't. You can listen. You listen to the call. Yeah, I did. I don't mean to ask you questions, but no, as I long did. as we're having a dialogue, I did. Yes, sir. Um, I I don't see any probative value of that, Your Honor. None. And when you look at that fifth call on top of the other four, it's certainly cumulative. Why do you need all five? of these 911 calls. Why isn't that cumulative? Well, they also, in the fifth call, isn't Donovan Thomas nut? Isn't that his? He's nut, yes. Well, then that's definitely one reason that they probably want to go ahead and get that. Well, then, let that me. identifies him as, as nut. The dec- I mean, and then later, are, later potentially, the, 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 the seed in this case. Are they going to have no other evidence that identifies that man but, as nut? I, 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 think, I don't know, but, if, but if you know, like, like, if they'd like to concede that they have no other evidence than the fifth call that identifies the decedent as Donovan Thomas, as peanut or nut, then I can understand that. But it's going to come in over and over and over again that the decedent is Donovan Thomas. So even if you give that they say nut at some point in the fifth call, and, and honestly, I can't remember one way or the other. It's near the end. It's near the, yeah, point, near the yeah. end. Of but but you've got five minutes of people desperately urging Mr. Thomas to hold on. It's highly prejudicial and it's cumulative. You've got the other four 911 calls um, in there. All right, I'll ask the state to distinguish that, but sir. I, okay. Do you really need all five? Yeah. Okay. I, I'll, and I'll ask them that with that question. Thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate you hearing this. Right. You're very welcome. All right, Ms. Love. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, the, court, um, the court's interpretation of the calls in the state's estimation is exactly correct. The um, each call uh, is an effort to get assistance for a man who is dying. So the on, the emergency remains ongoing. Contrary to um, my colleague's um, distinction in terms of the crime itself, there's a person there who is still trying to hang on. And uh, as far as the cumulative nature of the calls, you know, what's the difference between one and five? Calls one and five seem to replicate the same kind of thing, but can you distinguish why the jury would need to hear both? Yes, Your Honor. In one, they're telling um, the 911 caller is giving um, sort of a um, description of where they are. We're right here in front of um, Castleberry. Um, They're asking for aid. Directions. They're giving back, right. Um, The... um, Okay. Just one second, Your Honor. In the um, first call, um, they say that they're at Northside and McDaniel, um, and they are describing that they're at a particular location. Um, They are, of course, trying to get help, um, and they're just saying Northside and McDaniel. By the time you get down to the um, fifth call, since that's the two that we're distinguishing. Um, we have the difference is you have the caller speaking to Mr. Thomas. Um, you have um, the additional description. We're right here in front of Castleberry. They're naming particular um, landmarks that are relevant. We have multiple people who are around, we think it's as powerful um, what is not said as what is said. Um, The fact that there are at least um, five calls that come in, Um, the jury is going to hear from Detective Thorpe and others what they were and were not able to get from people on scene. We believe that the calls are necessary to paint um, the picture of exactly what is happening at that time for the jury. Uh, There are a number of people standing around. Uh, By the time you get to the end of the police sort of investigation on scene, um, you see that they come away with uh, very few, if any, people who are willing or able to step forward and say what they saw and what happened. The state has the burden of proof. So to say that we don't need these calls because (coughs) they are about, uh, I guess, the same thing or they're doing the same thing is um, it's 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 not taking into account 
the fact that we have to prove each of these things beyond a reasonable doubt. So every witness that we have, every call that we have, and the information that we're trying to put up is for the jury to be able to understand the facts of each of these situations as they occurred and to get the fullest picture possible of what happened at a particular scene. So our argument is that um, there is different information in each of the calls. There is a different person. There is a different descriptor. And um, there is no substantially more prejudicial impact that these calls can have than the fact that the man actually died. So for it to be excluded or for something to be excluded under the extreme remedy of um, 403 exclusion, Your Honor, it should um, have substantially a more prejudicial effect than probative. And the mere fact that Mr. Weinstein asserts that we don't need it is um, contrary to what I'm certain we'll hear in the end when the argument becomes the state hasn't met its burden. So every opportunity that we have to prove up relevant parts of this case, we're asking the court to allow us to do that. All right. Well, <laughs> there, there comes a point where it is cumulative. I, I, I agree with you in this particular circumstance that call one does give directions, call two, call five does give directions, but also gives more pertinent information about what's going on yes, sure. and efforts to, for them to go ahead and uh, get emergency services for Mr. For, Thomas. For Mr. Thomas uh, and for there Mr. were also two other people who were shot as well, Mr. Sanders and Mr. Hendrick, okay. who are needing assistance as All well. Right. And so um, if the court wants for me to go through two, three, and four as well. I'm good. I, I'm good. I'm good. Can, if I, I'm just going to respond briefly about call five. I, I, the state gives away the reality of their position when the state says call five is powerful. Powerful, which is another word for highly prejudicial. It is powerful because it is so unfairly prejudicial to the defendants in this case, Your Honor. There is no need whatsoever. It is duplicative of the other calls. It is unfairly prejudicial, and it is cumulative. There is no reason for call five, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, sir. I'm going to overrule your objection. I'm going to note your objections for purposes of the record. Thank you. Um, but assuming the state can lay the foundation, I'm going to admit the calls. Anybody else? Um, I, I have something. Good morning again, sir. Your Honor, there was a part um, where, and I don't know what he's saying, it's, it's indecipherable to me, but it seems like... The Which court, calls, sir, are you talking about? Um, are you talking about calls or are you talking about another issue? Calls. I okay, all right, okay. Which call uh, um, to begin with? That's... Uh, well, I'm going to draw now. Um, it's in the first call. 2YA. I'm being told by the Honorable. To Yankee Alpha? Yes. Okay, all right, sir. Um, I, I can't make out the words. That in terms of what? In terms of what is being said, it doesn't make um, a flowing, comprehensive communication. But I do hear. Jackson. And there's a gentleman that uh, the state is arguing he's in a conspiracy with Mr. Williams, who is on trial with us um, named last name Jackson. And Jackson's still well with Jackson. And I'd like that to be removed. That, you know, you can I don't think so. I, I, I don't think that's going to get removed. Okay, well, I'd like it to be removed under 403 because I find it to be lacking in any probative value. And it's prejudicial because we're in a alleged but it, but it's a, it's a potential one admission, one a excited utterance, and two, it may be an identification of, of somebody. Now, whether or not the jury believes that, but the circumstances themselves um, lead it, lead it so that 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 particular circumstance would, you know, is can be played. If it's an identification, would that go to? We need cross examination. No, because it's not the primary purpose of the call is not um, is a citizen initiated call. It's not a police initiated call. Well, I don't think that that's a distinction without a difference because to me, an indiscernible just word Jackson or or Steele or 
um, you know, any name, Ruth, it just, it's without context, it's just totally prejudicial. And then if the state wants to argue, hey, I'm not saying they're going to do this. Uh, Miss Love would do it, but no one else. But if they said, hey, that means it's an identification, we're going to come to you and ask for a mistrial. Because that's not the evidence. And you're going to say, well, yeah, shouldn't have done that, but it's up to the jury. I'm trying to prevent that. All right. Um, Miss Love, anything? Judge, I'm not even sure what that was. Um, the, uh, Mr. Steele's interpretation of what excited utterances are made on the 911 call are of no consequence. They don't make it any less of an excited utterance. And his assertion that they might think that it's Jackson that's being said or whatever it is, is it still doesn't, it doesn't speak to the admissibility of these, of these calls and their content. All right. Mr. Steele, anything else, sir? No. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm gonna note your objection first, sir. Anybody else? Okay, anything else for a call for our jurors? Your Honor, Mr. Steele is bringing over some exhibits or something he's asking us to listen to. We're kind of in the middle of doing two things, so I'd like for the, if the court would allow us a moment to understand what he's saying and what he wants, it'd be great. Okay, all right. Ms. Harvey, could you use your microphone? Thank you, sir. I think I did yesterday evening, but I do want to renew my motion to sever based upon prejudicial spillover of 105 instruction with you, regard. You did, and I forgot, okay. sir, to uh, to again um, acknowledge that you have once again um, raised for purposes of your client severance based on the prejudicial spillover as you've, if you, if you've argued and you've also asked this court for a 105 limiting instruction which and you have been kind enough to give me a continuing objection I have but you, okay, thank you that's fine okay yeah unless you opt out it will be yes alright let's summon our jurors oh, could you rule because I'm objecting I objected last night but to the CAD reports coming in. They would be 1TA, 1TA. 1T, uh, Alpha through Bravo. No, actually, oh, and thank you for reminding me something. Do something. Miss, no, no, it's 1 Tango Alpha, 1 Tango Bravo, uh, 1 Yankee Alpha, 6, 62 India. I said Lima Lima, but they're actually India India Alpha and 62 India India Bravo. Um, if Ms. if the state can lay the foundation, oh, the wow. everything but the narrative um, can be can can be admitted. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna grant it in part and um, I'll rule it in part. Your Honor, can I have well first of all there. I'm reading that there's two additional exhibits. Am I wrong for the CAD reports? Yeah, the CAD reports in general, okay, are all going to be, assuming the state, Ms. Ladner comes up here, lays the foundation, talks about the codes, she's the custodian, over your probable objection, I'm probably going to allow that. But I'm not going to allow the narrative, uh, you know, um, statements at the end. Okay, so can without we, without some because the state hasn't told me any exception excited utterance of, as to whether or not they actually fall within there, so I have and I can't hear them, so which makes a difference in context for the court. All right, and I understood. So can I just continue, if you don't mind, a continuing objection to it, it coming in at all? Yes, you can have a continuing objection. I can take close here. Sir. Yes. Okay. Okay. I appreciate it, sir. All right. I, I have. Am I wrong? I have a two other cat reports that you didn't mention. You went up to six sixty-two. No, there's ad there's additional demonstrative aids, Mr. Okay. Mr. 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 Steele, and I and since I don't have any visibility on those, um, we'll take those up as needed. All right. Okay. Thank you. I just want to continue objecting. All right, it's noted. Some of our jurors, please. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right. Thank you. I have a bell.
John, we also have not um, had time to review whatever is on this thumb drive that Mr. Steele brought over a second ago. So um, if the court uh, would permit us to do at, that. At an appropriate time? Yes. Yes, sure. Well, what is so it, Mr. Steele? Have... Um, thank you for asking. It is the state put in, without objection, part of police radio traffic from the 9th, 11, 13 incident, Mr. Dotson or Mr. Bean. It's not complete. I'm completing it. Ms. Latner is here. I'll call her back. I've given all this. The state's given this to me. I don't understand how this is even taking any time. Ms. Latner's listened to it. Now the state has removed her uh, posted from it. I just need to get it in. Ms. Latner said it's exactly what it is. I'm going to ask her on a cross-examination, and it should not. I believe I was asked when she was here last time. Yeah, the, the Thank for you. the stuff that has been admitted, we don't have any problem with. The point is, is that Mr. Steele constantly gives us stuff without giving us an opportunity to look at it without a label on it. Right, so that can be argued on both sides. It can, well. so, but we're just but, asking for an opportunity to look at it. Okay, all right, but but if it purports to be, just listen to it. But I believe that Mr. Steele did ask Ms. Latners about that when when about the instance of Mr. Bean. So. I mean, she's back on the stand to be testified to, to testify. So and all we're doing is asking for it, a okay. chance to look at it, to listen. To yes, it. well, certainly. All right, so Drew. All jurors are present? All right, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, jury, good morning. Good morning. All right, okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue with the presentation of the state's case. Um, call your next witness. Yes, Your Honor, the, stat call, the state calls Ms. Sharon Latners to say. All right, some of Ms. Latners, please. Ms. Ladders, if you once again approach the witness stand, and once you get there, if you turn and be sworn as a witness before you sit down. Sharon Ladders, S H A R O N. L-A-T-N-E-R-S. Good morning, Ms. Latters, and welcome back. I'm Good morning. Good. Thank you, Ms. Latters. Now, I'm going to approach you, Ms. Latters, with a number of cat reports. Your Honor, for the record, I am approaching Ms. Latters with one Tango Alpha Food Bravo, one Yankee Alpha Food Bravo, 62 India India Alpha Food Bravo, Two Yankee and two Yankee Alpha through Echo Drive. Sorry, sir. <laughs> now, Miss Lattice, once you are able to look through those, just look up at me and we will talk about it. I do. And how are I'll start with the ones that are one tango alpha and bravo? How do you recognize those two facts? They'll copy Atlanta 911 cat report incident. 
and are they a fair and accurate depiction of the cat reports for the incident? Yes. And then I'm going to turn to the exhibit mark one Yankee Alpha and one Yankee Bravo. This be the third and sixth document before you. Do those documents, uh, do you recognize them? I do. And are they a fair and accurate depiction? Yes. I'm going to turn to the two exhibits that are 62 in the Alpha and Bravo. Do you recognize those documents as well? Yes. And are they a fair and accurate depiction of the categories related to that date? Yes. And finally, we have a document that's two Yankees, and then there should be a CD that's two Yankee Alpha. Do you see those designs? Yes, sir. And do you recognize them? I do. And are they a fair and accurate depiction of the incident on that day? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, we say tenders and evidence, states exhibits one Tango Alpha and Bravo, one Yankee Alpha and Bravo, 62 India India Alpha and Bravo, as well as two Yankee and two Yankee Alpha at this time. Any objection or any further objections to, uh, to states um, one Tango Alpha or Bravo? And otherwise, it's not been noted. Not otherwise. Okay, I'll, I'll admit it subject to the subject to early rulings of the court. Um, what about one Yankee Alpha? 62 India India Alpha or 62 India India Bravo? At the same answer. All right. Um, then the court will um, admit those over objection um, sub subject to the early, uh, uh, court's earlier ruling. Thank you, Your Honor. And I'm going to, in regards to 2 Yankee Alpha, this is a disc, but it also contains a record from also Kimberly. Two Yankee subsection Alpha through Echo, so Alpha Bravo, Charlie Delta, and Echo. <coughs> any further, uh, any further, or any objections should say to states two Yankee Alpha through Echo. I have the same objection. Okay, all right. There, the, your the prior obje objections have been noted. The court will admit it over the uh, over objection. And maybe publish as you see fit subject to the court's earlier rulings. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, this line is, I know that's a lot of documents. Let's start with the one tango alpha. Can you tell the jury what happened? What is one tango alpha? What is that? It's an incident from January 6, 2015. And how did that incident come about? Your Honor. If you, objections? Yeah. I'm sorry. Objection. Basis. Um, computation laws, hearsay. Let me take a look at the question. I'm over the objection. <clears throat> Ms. Lyman, you may answer, you may have forgotten the question. What is the nature of that call? Unit 1111 pulled out on this call. And what is the, what kind of call did they pull out? Fight in progress. What is the code for a fight in progress? 29. And Your Honor, the state's also going to publish state's exhibit one tango out. And Ms. Lyman, when you say, that unit pulled out. What do you mean by that? He advised his dispatch to hold him out at that location was a fight in progress. And this was on January 6, 2015? Yes. Now, what was the location that he also pulled out to? 2517 Donnelly Hallwell Parkway, Northwest Atlanta. And Ms. Liners, what zone and beat is that 
Psalm 1, 109 speak. And what time, well, let me ask you this, Ms. Lattice. Is this a 9 call or officer-generated cat? Officer-generated cat. And what was the unit number of the officer who pulled out? Unit 1111. Do you know who that is, Ms. Lattice? No, I don't. Now, what time did this officer self-initiate this call? Zero two twenty eight forty two a.m. hours. And is the dispatch time the same time as he started the call on the court? Yes. Is that because it's self initiated? Yes. And Miss Ladders, what time did that officer clear the, that call? Zero three fifty five twenty two a.m. hours. And then Ms. Lattice, for this type of call for a 29 month of progress, what type of priority does that call have for the ADB? A priority three call, 20 minutes response time. <clears throat> Ms. Lattice, I'm going to turn to one Tango Drama. Now, Ms. Lattice, is, is one Tango Bravo, is this the same date? Yes. And I'm going to publish one Tango Bravo. What was the call type and description for this call, Ms. Lattice? 29, 69, which is the domestic fight and weapon involved. And what is the location for this uh, cat? 2517 Donnelly Hardwell Parkway, Northwest. And is that the same location as the Capitol we just discussed? Yes. What time was, and let me ask you this before I ask that, was this a officer generated or 911 call? 911 call. What time was the 911 call made? 02 29 15 a.m. hours. When were officers dispatched after that 911 call? Dispatched at 02 31 57 a.m. hours. And what time does that indicate that that call was clear? Zero three fifty two forty four a.m. hours. Now, I mean, Ms. Lattice, if you turn back to one tango out, let me just discuss how close in time is this incident cleared in relation to the one we just discussed when we started. What time it cleared? Yes, ma'am. Well, one cleared at zero three fifty two. One cleared at zero three fifty five. Three minutes apart. And Ms. Lattice, if you uh, look at these cat reports, do they reference one another as in related calls or do they not? Yes, they do. And can you explain how uh, cat reports, how it comes to be that they're related or how is that, what determines if something is related? But they have the same address. So the dispatch automated knows that they coincide together, they related to each other. So to keep a record of the incident, she just relayed 0299 to 0294 and 0294 to 0299 so they can have a record of it. And you, Ms. Lattice, do you know, is it that location, 2517 Donnelly Hollow? Is that a residence, a business, do you know? I don't know. And where do they reference one another in categories? When you come down, it says police. In the middle of the cat, it says police, then it has 15006-0294. As police, 15006-0299. Now, Ms. Lattice, I'm going to turn to <coughs> State's Exhibit 1, Yankee Alpha. <laughs> What is the date for one day out of this line? January 8th, 2015. What was the call type and description for that case? Six was 25, shots fired. What type of priority does a shot fired have within a Um, Um, 
On here it shows prior to three, uh, prior to three, the 20 minutes response. What is the location for the shot fired call? 988 Confederate Court, Southeast Atlanta. Ms. Lappers, do you know what type, if it's a residence or business at 988 Confederate Court? I don't know. And was this call, Ms. Lappers, was it a 911 call or self-initiated? Self-initiated. What was the time that this call was self-initiated? 00-38-30 a.m. hours, which is 12-38 a.m. hours. From what time was this call cleared, Ms. Lappers? It shows 0 33 a.m. hours. And Ms. Lighters, uh, what is the 20 minute response time? What does that mean? It means that the dispatcher have 20 minutes to get the dispatch to get that call out to a unit. But since this was self-initiated, the system this year put this priority times on itself. Thank you, Ms. Lighters. What determines that in terms of how the priority is set? They were set by APD head co commanders, so they prioritized who's called by call type. Thank you, sir. Now, do you see the, the two categories that start with 62 India India? Yes. I'm going to start with 62 India India Alpha. You see that on the slide? Yes. What is the date on that incident? January the 8th, 2015. What is the call type and description? Shot fired. 25. Oh. Sorry. No, you were on the final slide. What was the location for the shot fired? <laughs> 675 Milton Park, Park, Southwest Atlanta. Was this a 911 call or was this officer generated? 911 call. What time <clears throat> did this 911 call? 23.13.02 p.m. hours, which is 11.13.02 p.m. hours. What time were officers dispatched for a ride in response to that call? 23.14.36 p.m. hours. Now, was this incident, does it have any related cases that are connected to it? <clears throat> yes, it's related to CAD 1500831.30. What were the unit numbers of the officers who responded to 675 Metropolitan Marjorie? Unit 1307. Now, Ms. Lathers, turning to 62 India India Bravo, is that the report that was related to what we just discussed? Yes. Is it the same date? Yes. What was the location for that category? 1064 Metropolitan Parkway, Southwest Atlanta. What was the call type for, what, what came in, or what type of call did they respond to? It was a self-initiated call, reckless driver, which is the 72. What zone in B was that? Zone 3, 302B. Now, what time was that call cleared? It was cleared at 01.10.50 a.m. hours. And what was the priority response time for the 72? A 20 minutes. Is that the same response time for the category we just discussed in the shot fire? No. What was that response time? 10 minutes. Now, Ms. Lavers, I'm going to turn to what's labeled as Stacey Exhibit 1 Yankee Bravo. What was the date and time that this call or this cab report pertains to? January the 9th, 2015. What was the call type that generated this cab? 25 shots fired. What was the location for this cab report? Spring Street, Northwest at Ivan Allen, Junior Boulevard, Northwest Atlanta. Now, Ms. Landers, what was the zone and beat for that location? Zone 5 is 508 beat. What time was the call received? Call came in at 
37 p.m. hours. How quickly did officers get dispatched? They got dispatched at 23.04, 27 p.m. hours. And what time was the call for here? Clear up at 23.13, 20 p.m. hours. What was the priority response for this call? 10 minutes. Now, Ms. Sliders, I'm going to turn your attention to what's labeled as two games, this category. Can you describe for jury what was the uh, day of this category? January 10th, 10th, 2015. What is the call type of inscription? Call type of it says 48 person dead, but the call came in as a 50 person shot. Now, can you explain to the jury uh, when you said can you elaborate on that? What did the call come in as? Call came in as a 50 person shot, but once they finished investigating the call, the, the officer changed the signal to a person dead, 48. Would, what, what was the priority response on this call? A priority team, uh, two. And would the priority be, would it be set by the person shot, the 50, or would it be set by the 48th person dead? Person shot. Now, Ms. Sliders, what was the address and location for this? 330 Med Daniel Street, Southwest Atlanta. What is the APD zone in heat? Zone 5, 507th Street. Now, Ms. Lathers, when you look at uh, units that responded, um, how many units responded to this call? <clears throat> and if you have the ballpark, that's all right. I'm going to say up to 15 units or more. And was this generated from a 911 call or self initiated by an officer? 911 call. What time did the 911 call was called? Call came in at 07 22 20 p.m. hours. <laughs> what time were officers dispatched? I'm sorry, correct myself. Call came in at 19 22. Is that 7 22 p.m.? 7 22 20 p.m. The yeah. officer dispatched at 7 22 54 p.m. hours. When does it state that officers arrived? They arrived at 725, 13 p.m. hours. Now, after arriving at 725, what time was the call clear? It would clear up the next day at 1230, 20 a.m. hours. <laughs> now, Ms. Lavers, when we had the only thing up there that's with you, you see that, that CD disc that's not a cabinet board? Yes. Does that pertain to this cabinet board that we just discussed? Yes. And what is contained on what's marked as it's two names, Alpha, Blue, Echo? Five now, one call. Your Honor, at this time, the state is going to play this marked as two names, Alpha. All right. Okay. Who's that? 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 Who's that?
zip that's published to, to your left, and you see it's five minutes and 19 seconds. And that's that's not our leading. I, I sustain the objection and still leading. You can rephrase. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Lightner, looking at the published zip, do you know how long this 911 call is that we just listed? You are improperly fresh. Oh, sir. You may answer this one. I see 519. And what was the time that elapsed between the first line of one call was made and the officers arrived to the scene of this 48 person shot? I can't tell you. I don't know. Ms. Lyons, if you look at what's marked as two names, <coughs> what time do you look at and tell the jury how much time elapsed between the line of one call was made and when the officers first arrived? I'm going to say no more than 15 seconds. So, officers, between the 911 call was made and when that 911 call was complete, had arrived on scene? Yes. Um, Your Honor, the state at this time, thank you, sir. The state is going to publish what's marked as two names, Your Honor. All right, sir. Atlanta 
Slammers, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip through these, so I'm showing you what's first been marked as two Yankee Fox Trot One. Have you shown this to councils? Your Honor, I can. They have right, smaller you copies. Make sure you show this. And then yes, sir. Sure. If any council wants to see, they are identical to what's been provided. There's uh, no change. All right, sir. Do they have the changes. Oh, yes, yes, there is. Correct. Yes, so there's. I want to see the final version. Yes. Yes. May we approach? Yes. Thank you.
marked as two Yankee Foxtrot set. So Miss Lattner's does two Yankee Foxtrot seven. Um, will it aid your testimony in what we have been discussing with this jury? Yes. And is the information contained on two Foxtrot seven the information that we have discussed in the exhibits we've admitted today? Yes. And is it a fair and accurate depiction of the information that uh, is on this exhibit with what is contained in the accompanying reports? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, the state tenders into evidence for demonstrative purposes to Yankee Foxtrot 7, state's exhibit. Any further objection to states to Yankee Foxtrot 7? No, no, they have already been Okay, all right. It, uh, early objection has been noted. I'll admit um, to Yankee Fox Trot 7 over objection. It may be uh, shown as a demonstrative at uh, to the as you see the case. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Your Honor, with the court's permission to make it so everyone can see, I'm going to put this easel at the spot of the courtroom, if that's all right. Counselors, you may um, you may relocate yourselves. Thank you, Your Honor. So everybody can see. Do you have the ability to put it on? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Can you do that so others who are not going to relocate can do that and see, please? I most certainly can, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Lammers, can you see this? Yes. Ms. Knight, are you working on publishing that? Yes, sir. Okay. Ms. Lammers, there is a wooden pointer that's right over your right shoulder. Now, Ms. Lammers, starting with, can you explain to the jury what is depicted starting with the on this launch to January 6th? You want me to do what now? Can you, uh, so I will, here, I'll, I'll help you slide with this one. So starting here is what was the date and time of this incident report that we discussed? January 6, 2015. And does this correspond with Alpha that we discussed? Yes. What is the last three of the AP case number? <laughs> 294. And what was the location and call time? Objection, Ashton Nixon. Oh, ruled. What was the location, Ms. Latin, for this January 6th incident? 2517 Donnelly Hallway, Parkway, Northwest. And what was the call type and description? Objection, Ashton Nixon. I'll sustain the objection. Ms. Latin? The sitting is 29. Description is fight in progress. Ms. Lammers, after we discussed One Tango Alpha, you recall talking about One Tango Bravo? Yes. Is where this corner, which is the second demonstrative with gray for the record, is this what we have discussed in One Tango Bravo? Yes. What was the last three of this APD case number? 094. No, I'm sorry. Zero. It's three. It's yes, two. 299. And is this the same location as the first call that started at 228 a.m. Yes. Question has answered. That's the same objection. Now, Ms. Ladder's turning to this third icon that's depicted in blue and it's January 8th at 1238 a.m. Do you see that, Ms. Ladder? Yes. What is the last three for this January 8th, 20, for 1238 a.m. call? 094. And was that a shots fired call? Correct. And does that correspond with what we had discussed as one Yankee Alpha. Yes. The has to answer. Oh, we'll have objections, sir. Now, the slide is turning mm -hmm. to the fourth icon, which is gray, and it's January 8th, 11, 13 p.m. You see this, Ms. Lathers? Yes. Now, what is the last three of this APB case number? One to eight. And does this correspond with what we talked about in 62 India, India Alpha? Yes. 
And was this a shots fired call? Okay. Yes. Objection asked and answered. Um, I'll roll the objection, sir. Now, Ms. Lapp is turning to Div Icon, which is January 8th, two minutes later at 11.15 p.m. Do you see that, Ms. Lapp? Yes. Is this the same, or uh, what is the last three of this APD case number? 130. And was this correspond with what we talked about at 62 India, India, Bravo? Yes. And uh, do you recall we're discussing, is this the one that pertains to the came in as a 72 reckless driver? Objection, asked and answered. Hold on, sir. You didn't pull it out as a 72. Now, Ms. Ladders, turning to the sixth icon, which is January 9th, 10.58 p.m. with a gray background. Do you see that? Yes. What is the last three of this APD case number? 290. And what is the location and call type for this January 19, 15th? Objection, asked and answered. Hold on, sir. Shots fired, spray screen at Ivan Allen Jr. Boulevard. And uh, it looks like, well, uh, Ms. Latin, would you agree with me? It looks like there's a scripper's here above January 9th. That is the same as what's depicted as January 6th. Yes. But on the January 9th, 10 58 p.m. incident, that is what we talked about as one Yankee Bravo. Uh, what was the location call type for that? Objection, asked and answered. Oh, rule, sir. Shot fire, spray screen, and Ivan Allen. And Ms. Latner, finally, with what's depicted in red as January 10th at 722 p.m. Do you see that, Ms. Latner? Yes. What uh, was the location call type for this? Location is 330 McDaniel Street, Southwest. Came as a person shot. And what is the last three of the APD case number? 106. Do uh, these things we just talked about on this demonstrator, two Yankee Foxtrot 7, uh, is that encompass the January 6th through 10th incidents we discussed? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Lattimore. <laughs> Your Honor, I'm going to publish what's been marked as State's Exhibit 2 Yankee Echo. All right, sir. This is this has already been played one time, Your Honor. It's cumulative to play this again. No, I don't. This hasn't been, this hasn't been played. No, this is uh, this is the the, uh, the last yeah, the last thing. I'm gonna hold the objection. What was that, Mr. Shield? Can you take that down, Mr. I guess because yeah, they, the folks out here can't see it. Okay, bro. I don't know. 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 I don't
Okay, oh, trying to get me done. No, you cannot. <laughs> All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. All right, cross, Mr. Uh, Mr. Weinstein. All right, Mr. Steele. All right. Thank you, Ms. Slatners, for all your effort and support. You're welcome, sir. Um, I'd like to show you what I've marked a thumb drive as Mr. Williams number 202. And, Your Honor, it's A, B, C, D, 203. So you say it's Jeffrey Williams 202? Yes, and then... The whole thing is 202, but then it's A, B, C, D. So it's 202A, 202B. Alpha through what? Day, through what? Uh, David. Um, Delta. Delta. And then 203. Jeffrey Williams exhibit 203. And that will be A and B. Elisa Barry, Alpha Beta. Alpha you Bravo. You terrible. Alpha. You keep... <laughs> Look, there's the Greek alphabet. We're not going to talk about the Greek alphabet. This is the military alphabet, okay? And then there's your lovely wife and all the other things I, that I, you wish to cut, wish to do, okay? So it's my family alphabet. Let's just go ahead. Let's just go ahead. Let's just go ahead. It's just simpler for the court and 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 uh, and keep it track of this. So alpha through through delta, and then two hundred three is what? Two hundred three, Your Honor. Okay, and then what? A, B, and so it's two or three, and then there's a subset A and B. So two or three A, two or three B, and then two or four. And then there's a one subset, two or four A. Two or four uh, A and B? No, no, just A, you're on. Okay, all right. So let me see if I... What it matches is...
It's um, Jeffrey Williams 202 Alpha through Delta, Jeffrey Williams 202 Alpha and uh, Bravo, and uh, Jeffrey Williams 204 Alpha. That's true. Okay. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what the court said. Yes. So it's 202. So there's a 202, a 203, and a 204, and then the numerics. That's better. That's right. Yes, they, that's they true. Are sought to be admitted. All right. May I approach? Okay. All right. Slackers, may I approach you? If I have a choice. <laughs> you fine, sir. <laughs> I'm going to show you and put a stick on it. I'm going to show you what I marked, what I just announced. Um, on a thumb drive, and it's Mr. Williams, exhibit number 202, and then the subparts A through D, then 203 AB, and then 204 A. Have you had an opportunity to review that thumb drive or the contents of the thumb drive, I should say? Yes, sir. And does that contents of the thumb drive, um, do you recognize what it is? Yes. And does it accurately depict the radio traffic from July? That's wrong. Drawing September 11, 2013. Yes. And is it, to your knowledge, any changes, modifications, alterations to that, that radio traffic? No. Your Honor, I will move for the admission of Mr. Williams' exhibit number 202 and then the subsets that we announced, A, B, C, D, 203, subset A, B, and then 204, which is a subset A. So it's like the court board said, you have all three, 202, 203, 204, and then no subset. State any objection to uh, Ms. Um, Jeffrey Williams, 202 or 202 Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta? No, no. All right, what about Jeffrey Williams, 203, 203 Alpha, and Bravo? No, no. And Jeffrey Williams, 204 Alpha, 204 and 204 Alpha? No, no. All right, they're admitted and they be published as you see fit. And Ms. Latin, it's just a question because you came and discussed part of those rate bad radio traffic previously in your testimony. Is that fair to say? Yes. But I just wanted to put in the entire radio traffic. Is that now the entire radio traffic as far as that incident? Objection, Your Honor, just some commentary. Okay, I'll sustain the objection. Is that what it, what is is that the radio traffic in its entirety? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, um, I don't have any other questions. Thank right. you. Thank Ms. you, Latin, sir. Thank you. All right, any further examina defense examination? Ms. Latners, good morning. Good morning. Ms. Latners, uh, you are the custodian of uh, no woman calls and CAD records uh, for this county, is that correct? City of Atlanta. City of Atlanta, correct. And you've testified in various uh, counties and uh, jurisdictions uh, where City of Atlanta has brought themselves over into perhaps DeKalb County, correct? Correct. All right. So uh, as the uh, custodian for the City of Atlanta, obviously uh, we have listened to some 911 calls, correct? Correct. All right. Uh, you certainly were not present at any of these locations, correct? Correct. You don't know the circumstances uh, involving any of these 911 calls that we've heard, correct? Correct. Uh, you don't know any stories from one side or the other in terms of how any of these events occurred, correct? Correct. Uh, you have basically given us a rundown of these calls, correct? Correct. In the calls that we heard today, you did not hear uh, any uh, calls in these particular ones that have been played before you this morning of any uh, YSL, you did not hear that word or that phrase in any of those calls, correct? Correct. You did not, we did not hear uh, any particular person that's sitting in this courtroom, we did not hear their name on any of those calls that we've heard that were played this morning, correct? Correct. Your Honor, I have a question. I'll objection. But you did hear the calls yourself, correct? Correct. Mm 
That's all I have. Thank you. All right, sir. Thank you. Any further examiners, defense examiners? Any redirect? No, Your Honor. All right. May Miss Latners be permanently and temporarily excused as a witness. <laughs> All right, Miss Latners, we'll see you when we see you. Okay, we'll give you enough time to uh, to to rejoin us when that time comes. Let's so enjoy your weekend now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, you may. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have good news and I have kind of kind of bad news for you. Okay, which one do you want to hear first? Okay, you're gonna to have to come in on Monday. All right, that's the bad news. All right, the good news is we're finished for today. All right, okay, so so we're going to now. Here, I'm gonna tell you. Let me fill in the rest of this part. He says the rest of the story. Okay. Um, yes, originally we were going to be off on, off all next week. My other business, um, that I thought I was going to be taking up is I'm not taking up on Monday. So we're going to, we're going to reclaim a little time and go ahead and, and have a full day of work on Monday. That's now the rest of the week is still the rest of the week. You're going to get the Tuesday through Friday through the Memorial Day Monday will be off. Okay. That just happened. I just found out about today. So I'm sure I shared that with council um, as well. So we're going to come in on Monday and that's the only day we're going to work next week. The rest of the week will be administrative weeks. Uh, I apologize for the change in schedule, but um, things just happen. So um, because I can't conduct my other business, we're going to go ahead and just, we're going to just continue on. Um, all right. So, and today, given that the, the length of the witness I told you we're going to be leaving today around noon anyways, it will far and eclipse what we're able to take care of today. So that's why we're going to stop now. And it makes no sense for us to then to start and not finish with our witness. So I've inquired and um, 
And that's the, that's the plan at this point in time, okay? So, does that answer your questions? Okay, all right. I apologize. You can blame me. Give me the, you know, as a the stink eye for Monday, but you know, um, it's it's uh, we'll we'll just we'll just work accordingly and see if we can kind of see if we can take some more um, more testimony on Monday. Okay, so Monday will be a work day. And what time do you need to report? <laughs> I didn't say nothing. Council, I mean, I should say, Jerry, if you could report for nine o'clock, we'll get started by about nine thirty or thereabouts. Okay, so let's just report for nine. We'll start at nine thirty. All right, for Monday. All right. Do you have any other minister inquiry, me, ladies and gentlemen? I'm sorry for what? I, 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 I'm, I apologize. One more time. Money. Oh. No, I don't have any. Okay, so um, I can inquire of um, of, uh, of of a couple of folks, Miss Amani, and I'll inquire about Miss uh, Miss Lonnie Kelsch, uh to see. But Mr. Randolph, who you met earlier, is a person that submits that time, so we go through him. So we'll we'll do a we'll do an audit if there's something. It should not been paid. Let um, be a letter know, and then we can we can follow up from there. Okay. All right. All right. Anything else? No. Did you have a question just now? Okay. We'll reach out to him. Okay. Ooh. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, it's been taken care of. Okay, all right. Yeah, I understand that we're we're keeping up with your your day, so your your enumeration can be as as uh, accurate as possible. All right. Anybody else have any other inquiry of me? Okay, let's go ahead and um, wrap up then, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, leave your notepads in the baskets uh, in the back. Um, as you leave today, please do not discuss um, anything that you've heard about this case amongst each other and ones and twos or when you go home with your significant others or any other times that you are in the presence of each other or the presence of, of third parties. It would be a violation for you to discuss this case or to have anything discuss this case in your presence and hearing. Remember, I told you that if anybody should try and reach out to you uh, and this in any form or fashion, by any mode or modality, that your responsibility and duty would be to let Sergeant Ingram or myself know immediately. Also, don't go to any third-party websites uh, third, or any other sources to get any or glean any other information about this trial. Remember, you can only consider what's been presented within the four walls of this courtroom. Um, that also pertains to anything that you may have learned about any of the scenes maybe that have been depicted or you've learned about through testimony. It would be impermissible for you to over the weekend to go and visit any of those scenes or, uh, or to do any things that the court mentioned to earlier during the selection process, take pictures or anything such as that. That would be a violation of the court's admonition. So remember, you can only consider what's in uh, within presented in the four walls of this courtroom. Also, as you're sitting back there or you're leaving, it would be improper for you to recap or otherwise handicap the testimony. So you can't, as you're sitting back there, say, hey, we'll go ahead and get started. What do you think about such and such? What do you think about this testimony? And give your opinions or otherwise discuss anything that has been presented thus far. Remember, you can only do that when we get to the point um, in these proceedings that um, that is authorized, and then I will give you instructions on how you to begin that particular process. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the last thing is customarily is plea. And we say this, you know, I say this, and we, and I'm, on behalf of everybody, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patience that you've given us, and thank you for the patience that you'll continue to give us. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, um, enjoy your weekend, and we will see you on Monday at nine o'clock for anticipated 9.30 start time, okay? All right, all rise.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our jury has left us. Um, okay, please be seated. Ms. Hilton, you wish to correct an exhibit? Is that, was that, the best been brought to my attention? I did, but I had to do it in front of the jury, but I'll do it now and then do it in front of the jury on Monday. Um, Stacey's in 135 Echo Charlie is now Stacey. Oh, sorry. You all right? Yes. Uh, Stacey's in okay. 135. They said one thirty five Echo Charlie. Which is which were um the excerpted phone records of phone number nineteen ninety. Okay. Will be changed to States Exhibit one thirty five Echo Delta. And that's it, Sean. Is that because there's two exhibits that are um, one thirty-five Echo Charlie, and that was the one. One is the Sprint, and one is the Cricket, correct? One thirty-five Echo Charlie may be the. What was it? I need to know so, what it was. Yes. And so, what it's going to. So one thirty-five Echo Charlie was the excerpt that we printed out regarding the phone number nineteen ninety. Okay. And now there were duplicate 135 Echo Charlie. All of this pertains to the phone record ending in 1990. All right. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. And just, you can, uh, we'll just, we'll make that correction. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other minister inquiry of me, uh, councils? Um, who's, uh, yeah, let's cover who's going to be called on Monday. Um, judge, we're going to call the witnesses that we're going to call today, which includes Officer Corey Clinton Hayes. Sorry. What's his name? I'm sorry again. Hayes, H A Y E S. Officer Hayes. Yes. H A Y S. H A Y S. Oh, no E. Okay. All right. Okay. We will also be calling uh, Lieutenant Bali. B O L L E Y. First name F E R. Okay. And Your Honor, um, if the court will permit us to um, apprise the court of the remaining witnesses, as we had not anticipated calling witnesses on Monday, we just want to line those up and uh, we can let the court know by two o'clock at the latest. But I think we'll be able to know as soon as we get back to the street. All right. Exactly who the other ones will be, but okay. we'll have a full day on Monday, so we need to fill up that day. All right. Um, have you otherwise turned over or um, notified uh, your colleagues across the bar as to what exhibits that you are planning on introducing? Any, but, any um, video, audio? <clears throat> For the ones that for uh, for the first two witnesses that we were going to do today, we had for the ones that we will now call on Monday, we will. Um, we have not because. OK, wait a minute. Miss Hilton is correcting me. She's going to stand up. Your Honor, last week we sent a first um, set of exhibits that we planned on using the week after next. Um, and so we'll just need, so they should have, ideally those witnesses will be who we'll start with on Monday. So they should have that, at least that first additional um, set of exhibits. And when I say set of exhibits, the pool that we're going to pull from, which are the exhibits. And then um, we'll we'll be supplementing that, Your Honor. And so yes, sir. Just resend that or ident we, we get so many emails. So can you just identify when that was sent so I know which exhibits you're talking about? Yes, it was sent last Friday, or probably around 5 o'clock p.m. Um, by me. And it was a um, Dropbox link, um, and, it, and the password was in the link. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.
Okay, anything else, councils? All right, um, then we'll see you all um, Monday morning at 9 o'clock, and um, we'll have a regular work day, and I uh, appreciate y'all's patience and uh, flexibility with the schedule. So we'll see you on see you on Monday. Enjoy your weekend, okay? All right, we're in recess. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.